Hey YouTube, in this video we're going to be comparing ChatGPT, the powerful language model from OpenAI, with Stack Overflow, the go-to destination for programming help. But before we dive into the comparison, let's take a moment to explain what these two tools are and how they differ. ChatGPT is a large language model. It uses state-of-the-art machine learning algorithms to generate human-like text, allowing it to understand and respond to a wide variety of questions and prompts. Stack Overflow, on the other hand, is a website where programmers can ask and answer questions related to coding. It's a community-driven platform where experienced users provide answers to help other users solve their problems. The big news recently is that Stack Overflow has banned the use of ChatGBT in creating answers to questions. Now that we have a better understanding of these two tools, let's get started with the comparison. We're gonna take some of the most popular Stack Overflow questions ask ChatGPT and compare the results. And in case you were curious, yes, I did use ChatGPT to help me write the intro script to this video. So here I am on Stack Overflow, and what I've done is just put in Python as my programming language of choice, and uh, we're looking at some of the most frequently asked questions. This first one is right up my alley. We can see the person is asking how to make good reproducible pandas examples. The question they're asking is how to make these examples when the data is more complicated, like if they have a datetime index or multi-index. So I'm gonna go over here to chat GPT and just copy and paste the whole question. I'm gonna delete some of this, but I'm just gonna hit enter. So we can see ChatGPT is already underway creating an answer to this question. It's actually writing some code out and it's giving us some examples. But does this answer actually make any sense? So the first part of this answer does make sense. It's telling us how to make an example data frame. The second part is talking about using strings to answer this. So it's actually just saying to make this code into one long string. So what I'm gonna do here is actually run this code and see if it works. One issue that we're running across is this code actually doesn't run. It's using this date range as an index, which would have 31 values. And then the example data frame only has three. So anyone who knows how to code would see this issue. The second part of the answer is talking about using the data frames to string method. Not only do I think this code would not run, but it doesn't really get at the question that's being asked. In general, it's getting some of the ideas correct, like using to dictionary method would be sort of helpful in this situation when trying to store off an example data frame. Now let's compare that to the actual Stack Overflow answer. Clearly th people think this is a good answer as 465 upvotes. One thing that's interesting about the Stack Overflow answer versus ChatGBT is it actually says things to avoid instead of just answering the question directly. And there's a unique structure to how they're answering it. They're going through a good way to do this, a bad way to do it, and the ugly. So if someone was asking me this question, I would definitely point them towards this Stack Overflow link and not necessarily a ChatGPT answer. Now this second example is a pretty standard Stack Overflow question. This question is asking if you have three variables like X, Y, or Z, how do you test if any of them are equal to a certain value? Let's go ahead and copy and paste this in its entirety into ChatGPT. Let's see what the answer is. Now this answer looks a lot better. It's saying to use the in keyword to test if the value is in a list. And then it also gives an alternative answer where you can use the any function to check if these values are in a list. That's not a common way to approach this and definitely the first way makes more sense. Just to check this code in my Python interpreter and it does run, this is a good solution and answer. It even shows the inline comments, which I don't think were in the original question. Now let's look at the Stack Overflow answer. So this has over a thousand upvotes. The thing I like about this answer is it's actually getting at the root of where the person was thinking incorrectly. They show how in the question being asked, there's actually a misconception about how Python works. So you can see here they're putting this or statement after X, Y, or Z. This would actually just check if Z equaled zero. It wouldn't be checking all of them. And this is something the question asker is con being confused by. So the Stack Overflow answer does address that misconception by the question asker. Then they do go on to give the resulting answer. 
This isn't a full solution to their exact problem, but it's showing the same thing that ChatGPT came up with, which is that they could use the in operator. Then the Stack Overflow author goes into a whole explanation as to where the question asker got wrong. So I'd say for this one, both ChatGPT and Stack Overflow gave correct answers. There are some additional benefits to how Stack Overflow answered. On the other hand, ChatGPT did give a whole code snippet that we could just paste in and would work. Now the third and final Stack Overflow question we're gonna look at is about asking the user for input until they give a valid response. So it's clear that this person wants to write some code where it'll ask something like age, and if the user does not put in a numeric value, it'll keep asking the question until it's correct. So I did add a little bit of context here to the question about it being in Python and I phrased it as a question. The answer that ChatGPT comes up with is to use a while loop with a try exception clause in the result. Now this is looks like a valid example and it shows how it will break out of the loop if you write the code like this. It even uses their exact example, which is pretty interesting of uh, being voting age. Again, I'll paste this into a Jupyter notebook to see if the answer works. So I'm going to put A, it says it doesn't understand, B, negative uh, 5. Sorry, age cannot be negative. And if I put 21, it'll say I'm vo able to vote. If I put 10, this code does work and it answers the question. Now let's go back to Stack Overflow and see what the top answer is for this. Again, we got to scroll down here. And the answer is pretty much the same. And you can see this person actually took it to a whole nother level, making additional checks, encapsulating everything as a function. This is a stellar human response, but also is kind of going beyond what was asked in the question. Just as a sanity check, let's go ahead and run this Stack Overflow answer. And if we give it A, it says it must be an integer. So you could see that it has some more checks in it. Now this function they created is a generic solution that would work for any question and not necessarily just specifically the question that was asked. ChatGBT blows my mind. It's amazing technology and it can really help with writing code. But does it beat out Stack Overflow? I think the jury's still out. And at least for these examples, it looks like there are some solutions that ChatGBT just can't match up to a human with yet. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe.